morning, St. John's, and welcome. Good morning. Pastor Lisa, as you know, is taking some time off, and so we welcome Reverend Scott Fuller to uh, our worship service. Thank you. Thank you. And we also welcome back Donna Groom to the piano. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any announcements? This is the, uh, in addition to being World Day of Prayer, is the offering date for Neighbors in Need. There was a little blurb in your newsletter, but there's a lot of other things. The Neighbors in Need offering, a third of it goes to Kane, which is the American Indian group, and, and those. And then the other two thirds goes to Justice and Witness uh, Project and some grants. And uh, for instance, like here's one, uh, Mayflower Church in and they are working uh, uh, to, to transition from tr uh, fossil fuels to combat climate change. Here's another church where they are taking care of um, environmental and climate um, uh, ideas and promoting those. There's another church that's working with, uh, in Houston, Texas, that's working with trying to get a livable wage for a lot of the folks there then. So that offering is this Sunday, but also next week, if you, uh, cause we were at downtown Evan City last Sunday, so I didn't get to talk to you about that. So we can take that up again next week also. Thank you. Diane. Uh, this is Mental Illness Awareness Week. And so in honor of uh, recognition of that, Last year we had a, a prayer visual out here in front of the church on Wednesday. Well, this year we're gonna include a walk. So if you would like to participate in, uh, NAMI does a lot of walks this week. NAMI walks here or there. Well, we're gonna walk from downtown center of Evan City with candles at 7.30. So meet at 7.30 at the center of town there. And we're gonna make three stops, end up over uh, Richard Hall and we'll have a lighted hope sign over here. So if you'd like to join us, candles will be available uh, at 7.30 on Wednesday. Also, uh, in recognition of this uh, week, we are sponsoring a book study. And there's information that was in the messenger, but this is the book. I have four books back there if you'd like to read it. We're gonna discuss it on Sunday, th the last Sunday of the month, and you don't have to have read it to come to the discussion. Uh, but it is a local author. In fact, I had our kids in school. So this is why we, this is one of the first books we as the WISE team uh, read. So if you're interested, it's back there. Thank you. Amy. Uh, Trunk or Treat is this week uh, on Saturday. So um, Dawn was nice enough to tell me that it might rain. So bring your canopies. Um, it's 12 to, uh, noon to 2 p.m. Um, and if you guys want to give anything else to hand out or you just want to come hand out, just see me and we'll see you on Saturday. Nancy? Just wanted to remind people there is a sheet out there for fellowship. It's looking kind of empty. We could use some fill-ins for October and November. And also the Blue Kangaroo is open this week on Friday. I'm going to need some volunteers, thanks to Amy. We have a lot of clothes to put on hangers. So, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, I okay, Sue Ann. Um, just that we're gonna be doing the Neighborhood Academy, taking our dinner, taco salad, on the 23rd, and I have a sign-up sheet in the back. If you sign up for the hamburger, it's frozen and it's downstairs, 18 pounds. So if you take four of them, it's four pounds, then you need four taco seasonings and just make it up and get it here the Sunday before we go and then we'll put it all together. But it's all down in the freezer, ready to go, okay? Anyone else? I've got something. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I am pleased to be back here. A lot's happened since, I think the last time I preached here was right when y'all announced that Lisa was coming. Yes, and I jumped out of the chair because she is a good friend of mine 
and my wife's, and, and it's, I hope, always gone well. Uh, okay. Y'all like her? Okay. I'd love it when one of my endorsements actually works. Um, one serious uh, announcement to make. Uh, at the beginning of the month, I start, went back to Nashville Vanderbilt University to begin doctoral work. And either there or at UPMC Monroeville, uh, I contracted COVID. This is the beginning of the month. I'm no, you're not in danger, okay? But I did, uh, after a number of tests and whatnot, I have long COVID, okay? The gift that keeps on giving. So I have a tendency now to get short of breath. So I was not, I'm not as chatty as I was the last time. I didn't go out and mingle because I need to have my breath for this service. So if it looks like I'm panting, nothing to be alarmed by. Y'all breathing is hard. <laughs> so um, yeah, I wish I could build the hospital for giving me COVID, but they won't let me. Um, so anyway, just to let you know that, and to also pass on that as an added benefit of long COVID, the sermon's shorter, so, you know. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for allowing me to come back. It's always a pleasure to see you all. And um, let us, what? Oh, we're not finished with the announcement. Okay, mistake number one of the day. All right. Are there any other announcements that you can think of? Uh, okay, Linda. It's at First Methodist Church in Pittsburgh on the corner of Center and Bonn. And um, it's, it starts at two o'clock. And so I have, I've been working on this for almost a year <laughs> for um, Pittsburgh Peace is Possible Coalition. That's who's putting it on. Um, I'm just the organizer. And so we have a number of groups coming from different faiths. We have a Hindu girl dancing. We have um, a, 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 from the Turkish Cultural Center, we have a man doing calligraphy. I don't know what that's about, but I'm going to find out. Um, and the Buddhists are bringing some children, I believe, and they're going to do some interactive stuff with the congregation. And your bell choir is going to play um, of peace, and what what I imagined things to be is what I wanted them to know to do is to think about what their vision of peace looks like, or feels like, or sounds like, and so I wanted them to be creative, not the same old, same old. So I'm looking forward to to seeing what all these different groups are bringing. Uh, we have some African drumming groups coming. Um, somebody asked me, what's peaceful about drumming? I said, I don't know, but we're going to find out. So that's what I've been working on, and it's today at 2 o'clock at the First Methodist Church. Thank you, Linda. Anything else? Okay. Carter? Oh, okay, he's just stretching. Okay, that's fine, because sometimes he does have something to say. Um, next... Uh, Next week, Sunday school starts at 9 o'clock. Anyone who wants to come for Sunday school um, will meet downstairs. Um, and choir meets on Wednesday. Anybody who wants to join the choir or do bells or um, sing any way you want, uh, please come on Wednesday and uh, help us out. Um, and the worship committee meets at 4 o'clock on Wednesday, too. If anyone would like to come and help participate in what we do during worship, that would be great. This month, we are beginning awareness to the mental health crisis that is happening in our country. I remember some years ago that talking about cancer 
was just not the thing to do. And here we are talking about it and encouraging people to be aware of their health and warning signs of cancer in everyday conversation. And that is what we are trying to do, the same thing for mental health. Talking about it, encouraging others to talk about it, and seeking help when needed. And as we, with cancer, there is hope. So as with mental health, there is hope for help and care. Um, October 16th at 5.30 is a NAMI support meeting here at St. John's. Anyone who wishes to come, anyone who knows someone who would need some help supporting mental health, we encourage them to um, come to that meeting at 5.30. Um, October 4th, as uh, Diane said, we had the talk for mental health, um, the walk for mental health. So please come and support these things. And I think that is all. So let us begin worship. My goodness, you are an active church and a wonderful sounding church. This is wonderful. Please rise for the passing of the peace. The peace of God be with you. I invite you to share your sign of God's peace.
celebrate the beauty of our diversity. Let us love each other as God loves us in a wonderful way in God's image. We give thanks for who we are, beloved of God. Let us open our hearts to God's spirit of love and unity. We celebrate the gifts of all gathered here today. Let us worship God with all we are and celebrate the beauty of all God's creatures, creation. You may be seated and the children can come forward. in school for about a month. Is there anything that you have learned? <laughs> I mean, I know how to do this new math equation. You know how to do a new math equation? Well, that's something. CJ, anything from you? Learning new words or anything? Reading? No, no. Okay. Multiplication? Okay. Eli, what about you? No? That's okay. Well, you know, I was with my second graders this week. And um, I have quite a few boys in my classroom. I have 12 boys in my classroom. <laughs> and a lot of them are very active. They love sports. And so every single Tuesday, every single Friday, and every single Monday, I get the sports update on the Steelers and Penn State and Pitt and everybody else. And really interesting learning all about sports. And I found a children's message that relates sports to the Bible. Isn't that interesting? So here's the verse that I want you to listen to today. It says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And that's from Romans chapter 8, 31b. That's the second part of that verse. And so today, of course, there's a really good football game on today. Which football game is it? No, not the penguins, not the penguins. <laughs> no. Who's on today? It's Crosby. No, not Crosby. Ben Roethlisberger Yeah, retired. he did retire. I'm sorry. This is the only jersey that I have. I have to go get a new jersey. He's a football I'll put it, I'll put it on my Christmas list. Yeah, the Steelers are playing today against the Texans. And so, I lost where I was going with this. Oh, okay. So can you tell me why you might like a certain team? I want the Steelers to win today. Preseason looked really good. So far, they're eh, right? Pirates are doing really good. Hockey hasn't started up just yet. We're waiting for it. But can you tell me why you might like a certain team in any sport? It doesn't have to be football. Why do you like a certain team? So let's start with this one because you're already wearing a jersey. Why do you like the Pittsburgh Pirates? <laughs> I... <laughs> well, let's think. Do you play baseball? You do? Okay. So if you play baseball, then you're rooting for your home team of the Pittsburgh Pirates, right? And you've had a lot of really cool experiences being on PNC Park Field and getting to say, play ball, right? That was just a month ago. What about you, Eli? Is there a certain sports team that you really like? Who is it? Uh, Steelers. The Steelers. And why do you like the Steelers? Because I play football. Because you play football, okay. Brayden, what about you? Do you, are you any? No? You like the penguins, okay, that's awesome. I hope these aren't answers to a math test on your arm. No. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a Jewish trust me now. So okay, good, all right. So some people say that they might like a certain team because it's the winning team. I'm still not sure about the Steelers, but we all have hope about them, right? Mm -hmm. And so that means that it wins most or all of the games. That's what we like about that team. They win most or all of the games. And did you know that you are part of a winning team? Huh? huh? What? Yeah, that's right. It's called God's team. If you've asked Jesus to be in your heart, to be your Savior and Lord, then you are automatically part of God's team. And so every team has a coach who guides them and helps them to do what they need to do to win the game. Mike Tomlin is the Steelers coach, right? He is in charge of leading the practices and making sure that the Steelers players are ready to go for Sunday football. 
and we've got the best coach ever. So I just told you what the winning team is that we're all on, so who's the coach of that? God. Um, God. Yeah, you got it! He always helps us do what we need to do in our lives the right way. And a football team that has plans that they need to play the game in its playbook, God has given his plans for us in his playbook, which is a book that's in the sanctuary. What's it called? Bible. The Bible. You're on a roll today. I hope you participate like this in school every day. So sometimes the game doesn't go the way that we want it to go, or the players, it doesn't go their way either. They get knocked down, or they make a mistake, or the worst thing, they fumble the football. All right? And they can get hit from behind when they don't expect it. And the players sometimes even get really hurt. And our lives can be like that too. But we have teammates. These are your teammates here in this church. They're all on the same team as you. And so they help pick us up, brush us off, and help us finish the game. And in the end, we always get to win because we are on God's team. And so someday when we are all in heaven and live forever with him, that's even better than winning the Steelers Sunday football game. All right? So think about that as you go on this week watching football today, football Sunday, and Monday night football, and college football was yesterday. Go Penn State, right? Go Penn State. So think about that, that we get to be on God's team no matter what. Right? So if you guys could pray with me, and then I'll send you back to your seats. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Help and guide us in all that we do and forgiving others to help us as well. Amen. Have a good week of school. Learn something this week. How many boys? In Twelve. Nobody feel it. How great spirit to suck the other. Let us stand at this time and say our prayer of confession together. Jesus, we confess that we have been dishonest in our walk with you. We have not treated others with respect and acceptance and have not cared for the least of these as you have called us to do. We have mistreated those in need and unfairly judged others. We ask your forgiveness and your mercy on us. Amen. Jesus has paid the price for our sins. We are free because Jesus Christ, our Savior, has made his grace accessible to us. Beloved, accept the good news. Take it into your hearts. You are forgiven. Amen. Forgiven. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Loving God in whom we live and move and have our being. We thank you for this day that we could come together and worship you. Lord, you have heard our concerns and you know that we live in a world of disease, of sadness, of strife, of all kinds. We know that there are people in and outside your church who attribute all sorts of things that reflect their wants rather than your wants. Keep us on the path, O oh Lord, and draw us closer to you. For in you, you bring us into community. Through you, we find peace and grace and hope, yes, hope, for healing and peace and comfort. Abide in us, O Lord, and help us that 
as John 17 says, we may all be one. We ask for this in the name of Christ Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together now in song. scripture today needs some explanation. Uh, I have picked three passages, one from the Hebrew scriptures and two from the New Testament, and they're all about prayer. Prayer that in some cases, in the case of our Hebrew scripture, produces a very unusual circumstance, and in our New T Testament readings, the power of prayer. And I just want you to hold them in your mind as we go through uh, these and the sermon. From Joshua 10 verses 9 through 14. So Joshua, uh, this is from uh, during a war between uh, Joshua's people and another group. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having marched up all night from Gilgal, and the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who inflicted a crushing blow on them at Gibeon, chased them by way of the ascent of Beth Haran, and struck them down as far as Azekah and Makeda, as they fled before Israel while they were going down the slope of Beth Haran. The Lord threw down huge stones on them as far as Azekah, and they died. And there were more who died because of the hailstones than the Israelites killed with the sword. And the, on the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke to the Lord, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still at Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Aijalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in mid-heaven and did not hurry to set, 
for about a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since when the Lord heeded a human voice, for the Lord fought for Israel. And now from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. Are any of you, are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was human like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth, and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And now a short passage from Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, would give him a rock? Or if the child asks for a fish, would give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask? Little over a week ago, I was asked to visit a patient who was about to leave the hospital and enter hospice care. The patient had a very aggressive cancer which caused him to experience a great deal of pain. The doctors and the surgeons and the nurses had done all they could, but it wasn't enough. And now he was facing his own mortality. Now, when I arrived at his room, his wife greeted me at the door. He's gonna throw you out, I fear. Why would someone throw me out, I asked. And she answered, he's had such a great faith in God and has spent the last couple of years praying for healing, praying for a miracle. And now he's angry with God and with religion. He doesn't even believe God exists anymore. Now, before I go on, he did not throw me out of the room. Usually people have to get to know me a little bit before they throw me out of the room. Now, he did want to talk to me, but he didn't throw me out. I am angry with God, whom I no longer believe exists. Does that make sense? Don't believe in God, but I'm still angry at him. It sounds like an oxymoron. It is an oxymoron. But we get there, and I see it a lot. Saw it a lot during COVID. Saw it a lot, uh, you know, every day. I have met many people who are looking at the end of either their own lives or the lives of a loved one people who are praying for miracles, people are praying for recovery. And sometimes people do get better, 
Sometimes they are able to heal from injuries or disease and get back to the places and people they love. And we celebrate when that happens. It's a time to rejoice and perhaps a time to say with happiness, look what God has done here. But the opposite is also true, as I said. I've met with people and their families who did not experience healing, whose prayers for a miracle were not answered. People who had to deal with the cold, hard truth of theirs or their loved one's mortality. We've all gone through that. After you get to a certain age, you have to say goodbye to friends and family, don't you? And it's rough. It's rough. You carry that with you. I saw this a lot during the COVID pandemic. One of the first people who died in our ICU was actually a minister. He and his church believed that Christ would shield the faithful from the virus. In fact, a lot of churches across the nation said and believed that. And while the pastor was in our ICU, he was constantly, and I mean constantly, 24 hours a day, surrounded by his family and his church members who were all praying day and night for his recovery. He is a man of God. He is the leader of our church. Why shouldn't he be healed? Are there not scriptures that say he would? Doesn't James 5.15, which you heard today, say the power of faith will heal the sick? Doesn't Jesus say, ask and ye shall receive? And that elsewhere he says, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can point at a mountain and say, move, and it will. They do. Scripture says that. And the pastor died. Along with almost 1.2 million people in our country alone. And to this day, I wonder, with compassion in my heart, about that, pa that church and that pastor's family. To this day, I wonder, did they lose their faith? About as, as that patient I began with did. Did they question why the prayers went unanswered? Did they think that God wasn't real? Or did they ask the same question as the April 8th, 1966 cover of Time magazine said, is God dead? Now, obviously, most of my work as a hospital chaplain revolves around death and grief, okay? It's just the fact of it is. We don't have a maternity ward. 95% of our patients are senior citizens. This is where I had landed. I get these questions a lot. And they're valid questions. And if you've ever had that question, it's okay. It's okay to ask. Throughout our lives, in our churches, we're told prayer works, do it. Just do it. Miracles happen, our scriptures confirm it. And yet we have all <clears throat> experienced life and bad stuff. That hurts, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. It hurts. I've been there, many of you have probably been there too, where our faith is shaken. That is why education matters so much. Education about our faith, right? We tend to think in ways that are unhealthy. And so we have to grow in our faith to combat that. Faith is like a muscle, okay? It's like a muscle. 
you have to exercise a muscle to get stronger, right? If you've ever had a, a joint replaced, like a hip, a knee, or gone through some surgery, what, what do you have to do? They make you exercise. Ugh. When I received the diagnosis of long COVID and shortness of breath, I have trouble walking around the hospital now and often have to go back to my office where I wheeze for about 20, 30 minutes and then I get up and do it again. Makes for fun days. I asked the doctor, okay, there's no cure for this. You have to ride it out, so what do I do? Exercise. <laughs> <clears throat> but when it comes to faith, most of us don't. The average education about our religion ends for most people around the sixth grade, because that's when they drop out of Sunday school and children's messages, right? Yeah, 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 I called you out, I'm sorry. We have to educate ourselves. We have to learn. We have to face those challenges so we can grow. Just like when you exercise, you face the challenges and you get stronger. In our culture, we tend to think a way that is wrong. You know, we think a lot of ways that are incorrect. And one of the ways we think is an either or situation, right? During the pandemic, a congressman stood up and gave a speech in which he said, either the masks work or they don't. Either the vaccine works or it doesn't. It's either 100% one way or it's 100% the other way, like a light switch. It's either on or off. But as we all know, you can still get COVID from wearing, while you're wearing a mask. It's harder, but COVID finds a way. You can still catch COVID if you have the vaccines. By the way, new strain bypasses the vaccine, get the new one when it comes out in a couple weeks or a week, or maybe it's already out. Okay, get it. I've been vaccinated all along and I've had it once before and <laughs> so. Life doesn't work in either or. Life works in both and. And God doesn't work that way either. When people tell me they don't believe in God anymore, I don't judge them. I, I don't, you know, wag the finger and turn on my southern and say, well, brother, you're going to burn in hell for all eternity if you don't believe in God and the blood of Jesus Christ. you got to get yourself to church and be saved. <clears throat> I moved to Pittsburgh from Tennessee. What can I say? <clears throat> Rather, I asked them how they used to think about God before they came to that conclusion. What'd you, how'd you think God worked? How, how, you know, tell me about the God you worship. Tell me what you thought about God. And again, stressing, I don't judge. What was that God like? And after going over their old way of thinking about God, again, usually stops at sixth grade, I asked the question, could it be that when you say God doesn't exist, what you really mean is that your idea of God has died? Not God, God's self, God's eternal, God's greater than we can imagine. But what happens is our old way of thinking about God gets disrupted and we have to work with that and think about that there have been many many times in my life where my thoughts and ideas about god that i was 100 percent certain about got upset turned over did not work Linda, you and I went to seminary. 
Isn't that the hallmark of seminary? You go to seminary and think, I know it all, I just need that paper and give me a church. No. Because then you start asking questions, which are good, always ask questions. And what you discover is that God may not be what you came in thinking. Education challenges your beliefs. And even though that struggle may be difficult and you may be uncertain, it is important. When the pandemic happened, it challenged how I believed God worked. And this is years after seminary, years after seminary and ministry. I celebrated my 25th anniversary of ordination during the pandemic. There were days when I stopped visiting and praying with patients and instead ran down to our little chapel in the hospital and prayed and prayed and prayed. Do something, oh Lord. We are out of control as a country. We're overwhelmed, we don't know, we're being lied to, we're being all these different messages, people coming in furious because we won't give them uh, dewormer, hydroclock, whatever that one was. And we are overwhelmed, mentally and emotionally battered. We had never seen that level of death before. And it challenged us. Some of our old ways of thinking about God died in the pandemic. Maybe we realized it, maybe we didn't, but God did not change. God is still our God. But when I read the story about Jesus healing lepers or bringing a little girl back to life, I see it differently now. The story hasn't changed. Open up any Bible. It's still there. But my thoughts have been changed. I'd like to think for the better. I look at the scriptures differently. We grow in faith. My spirituality grew during the pandemic because I was praying constantly. And so I felt closer and closer to God. Not perfect, but everything changed. Well, a lot of things changed, not everything. The old has died, the new is here. So what does God do with our prayers then? What is the point of praying if we don't always get what we pray for? That is the question, isn't it? <clears throat> Firstly, we know God hears us. Whether our prayer is said in a church service or when we are alone, God listens. And God loves us. We know that too. More than we could even conceive, God loves us and is working and desires the best possible good for all of us. God wants the best possible good in our lives. And the way God makes that best possible good happen is to work with us and through us. God gives us the inspiration, the strength, and the courage to keep trying, keep living, keep breathing, keep hoping, even in the worst of times. I often tell my patients that where there is breath, there is hope. If you're breathing, hope exists which is kind of ironic being I'm up here going. <laughs> God gives us the strength to get through. 
whatever struggles are happening in our lives? And should we not live through the experience as my patients go home with hospice and experience? God is there to take us to the unimaginable joy and beauty in God's reign. Do miracles happen? Yes, absolutely. I have seen people brought back to life when their hearts stop beating. I have seen people heal from horrible diseases who recovered from strokes or learned to live with the change in their life. And have also seen the best that medicine has to offer fail. And in those times, I've done my best to reassure them that I has not seen nor ear heard what the good Lord has prepared for us. God works through and in you. So keep praying. Strengthen your spirituality and your relationship with God even in the darkest times. Not so a miracle like in the Bible can happen, like stopping the sun in the sky so you could continue a war. But as, C, as C.S. Lewis, anybody ever read C.S. Lewis in here? Do you know who C.S. Lewis is? Okay, I know you have. <laughs> C.S. Lewis once said, Prayer doesn't change God, prayer changes me. And he said that while his beloved wife was dying of cancer. And some colleagues of him, of his, asked, why do you even bother praying? God changes us in profound ways so that when we face life's troubles, we can find the courage and the strength get through. Amen.
rise as we offer prayer. Holy God, we ask that you bless these offerings and tithes so that they can multiply to be a blessing for our community, our mission, and our own life. Accept our offerings and tithes as a testimony of your goodness in our lives. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> We in the United Church of Christ celebrate an open table. And by that, I mean that wherever you are on life's journey, whatever your faith may be at the moment, wherever you are, you are welcome here. There is no judgment at Christ's table. It is a family dinner table. There's room for everyone. So if you want to know Christ in the breaking of the bread and the pouring of the cup, you're allowed and you're welcome as family. You will remember that on the night where Jesus was betrayed, he first sat down for a meal not like Da Vinci painted, where everybody's on one side of the table posing, but gathered around a common table. Friends, disciples, perhaps even family, all sharing a meal together. And as people were talking and eating, Jesus stood up and he took a loaf of bread. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for each and every one of you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took an ordinary cup, poured wine in it, and gave God thanks for it, for the fruit of the vine. And after doing so, he said, this is the cup of a new covenant poured out in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And so it is that Christians ever since have gathered together in worship and at a meal and gave thanks and remembered Jesus. Let us bow our heads. O oh Lord, bless the fruit of the vine Bless, bless the grain that becomes bread and help us to stay close to you. Bless this holy communion, O Lord. May it be pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name, amen. Come, for all is prepared. Bread first, yes, sir.
body of Christ broken for each and every one of you. Take and eat. cup of blessing poured out for each and every one of you. Take and drink. Technology is great when it works. Let us pray. Source of life and breath and being, breathe into the dry dust of existence, nourished now by, in body by bread and juice, may we strive for the nourishment of all bodies. May we work to end hunger in this creation that provides so amply for all, nourished in spirit by the body which is within our own, may we strive for the incorporation of all. May we work to break the barriers that divide us one from another and from you. In the love that sustains us and the spirit who animates us, may we give all thanks and praise to you, God of all. Amen. in the name of the God who created you, 
in the name of the Christ who redeems us, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who empowers us to be a blessing to everywhere we meet, everywhere we go. Let us go in peace. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat>